Ow. Ooh. Hey guys, and welcome back to Mondays with me, Dr. Crystal. It's been a while, I know. I'm not gonna sit here and make excuses. I mean, I, I, okay, I might make one excuse. I have been getting slammed at work. Basketball season started, I've been at games almost every night. Um, but that is, that really is no excuse. I enjoy making videos for you guys, and so I need to get here and make videos. And so, that's what we're gonna do today. Fun fact, when I'm at home, I always drink coffee out of a straw because uh, I like to make sure my teeth stay white. Is it overkill? Probably, but I don't care. So if you're watching this video, you probably watch YouTube doctors, so you probably know who Dr. Mike is. Who doesn't know who Dr. Mike is? He's handsome, he's smart, he's funny. Let's, let's just slap a picture right here. Now I will admit, I do not watch all of his videos. I watch some because the topic pops up and it looks interesting, but like, I don't know, think about what you do for a job and like watching someone else talk about it is sometimes just like a little bit cringeworthy. Like, I don't know, I just, I, I don't like to watch all of the videos, but I do like him. But I mean, he is just kind of pretty to look at. Like I don't, I don't mind watching them. That being said, hundreds of thousands of you watch Dr. Mike's videos every single week. And so I thought today I'd react to one of them. I feel like everyone who knows who Dr. Mike is loves Dr. Mike. Is that true? I mean, I would, I'd let Dr. Mike be my baby daddy. I should probably consult my wife. Would you let, we'll see what she says. I'll update you. All right, you guys ready for this? Hope I agree with him or this is gonna be awkward. Dude's got 4.5 million subscribers. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so now I have to pick one. Let's see. So it looks like his most popular videos lately are where he reacts to memes. So how about I react to Dr. Mike reacting to memes? This might be the worst video ever. I'm, I'm sorry if that's how it turns out to be. <laughs> the wife hasn't responded yet. I don't know. Okay, so uh, he has like, seven of these, we're, just, we're gonna do the first one. I've never watched this because, I, I don't know, These this is one, one of the ones where I was like, uh, I feel like I don't really need to to, to watch that, but, but we'll watch it now. I've heard the topic of meme review get thrown around and I found out that PewDiePie was the one who made meme. I gotta pause it already, like, okay. If I can't say anything else, I can just say his hair is fire. I. I'm just a fan of Dr. Mike's hair. He has like kind of a baby face, but like a little bit of scruff. I mean, I, I get why he became the hot doctor of Instagram. So far, so good. Sleeping positions of different professionals. And then the doctor is on call in the ER. No, but seriously, I feel like whenever I was on call for a 24 hour shift, I would only be in the bed and you can catch me in the bed for like 15 minutes at a time. Ah, uh, that's seriously so true. Like. It would be, you know, you'd be on a call shift, you get to sleep, you are just about to like drift off to sleep, you know, you feel your dreams creeping in, and then the freaking pager goes off every time. Ugh, that just brings back awful memories. Luckily, I will never have to be on call in the hospital again. So, yeah, happy about that. Well, you see, Doc, the problem is obesity runs in my family. Doctor, no, the problem is nobody runs in your family. Family. Not everyone's obesity is a result of them being sedentary. In fact, the biggest problem when it comes to obesity is nutrition. All right, Dr. Mike getting serious on us here. A lot of it is lifestyle, and if you change your lifestyle, you're gonna be a lot healthier. Diet, exercise, but some of it is hereditary. I appreciate him laying down some knowledge here. You know, we're keeping it funny, but like, he's like, let's get serious for a second. Come on. Show up 15 minutes late they cancel your appointment, show up on time to the doctor, you're waiting an hour. My man Denzel knows what's up. We want to give patients the appropriate amount of time that they need for their given appointments, right? So if you come 15 minutes late, you're actually impeding on the time of someone else's appointment. This, yes, oh my gosh. People just do not understand this. And I wish that, I don't know, there should be like a flow chart in the waiting room or something to understand this. Yes, sometimes we're gonna take longer with a patient because something is going on, like an emergency or like something super serious that's gonna take a longer time. But our appointment spots, at least at my clinic, are 15 minutes long. And so, 
And our late policy is 10 minutes at, at my clinic. We'll usually see people a little bit later if they do come later. But like, think about it. If you get there 10 minutes late into a 15 minute appointment, there's five minutes left of your appointment slot. Then nurse has to come get you, room you, and get your vitals and all of that. By the time I'm actually in there seeing the patient, their appointment is over. And so that's why we have to cancel the appointment if you get there too late. And yes, sometimes we get behind. I try not to get behind. I get really stressed when I get behind, but we're trying our best here. I apologize in advance for the next time that you're waiting. You're healthy as a horse, me. Great. A horse with cancer, what a mean spirited. I feel like there should be a horse somewhere in this picture. Is there one? No, no horse. Oh, uh, so wrong. I want to live to be 100 years old. Anti-vax mom. Three, take care of yes. Why is on one hand, when I'm in the ER, I'm saving you, and then when your child comes to see me in the office, I'm poisoning them with neurotoxin? Get vaccinated, people, get vaccinated. Expectations versus reality. Going to the doctors with Instagram knowledge. This is me, I can't react to this. All people are beautiful. That was, that was a good save, Dr. Mike. All people are beautiful. But I mean, like, really, how many more people would go to their doctor if their doctor looked like Dr. Mike? I mean, just saying, just saying. Doctor, looks like you don't have any health insurance, so we're gonna let you die. Okay, fantastic, thank you. We don't let our patients die when they don't have insurance. In fact, in my hospital where I work, we have a charity care system in place for this exact reason to make sure people get covered if they don't have enough money to pay for insurance. The whole charity care thing is real nice, but like, I, there's no way that covers everything. It, it, it's, it's really rough for people. And like you said, we're not gonna let someone come in and just like refuse them emergency care because they don't have insurance but odds are they're gonna end up with a big fat bill. And there are programs all over in place to help with this, but like people still are going into debt all the time because of medical bills. It's a problem. It's one that needs to be fixed. I don't know the best way to fix it, but um, hopefully we will get some politicians in office who do know how to fix it. Yeah, right. <laughs> So Heather responded to me asking if Dr. Mike could be our baby daddy. And she said, LOL, I don't know him well enough. Why? <laughs> Just wondering. All right, Dr. Mike, if you're watching this, my wife's considering, so uh, let's, let's talk, let's talk. We could have beautiful, smart medical babies together, but you can't be their dad, just their sperm donor. Don't worry, I practice it on a mannequin once. This is so true. Nowadays, what we do is we make sure we bring in a senior doctor who has done this enough, is clear to do it, will now watch this person perform the procedure and sign off each time they do it until they get the required numbers in. I would have loved if this meme said, don't worry, I practice it on Surgeon Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> this is so true and you know, it, you do learn all of the main procedures and residency and do get signed off on it, like he was saying, but there are still times where I have to do something that I haven't done before. And this happened like within the last month, I had to do something and I had never done it before and I didn't really know how to do it. And I had to go look it up and figure out how to do it. And then I did it. Everything turned out fine. I guess the thing is, you know, we, we learn all the necessary skills in residency and hopefully given those skills that we have, we can figure out the things that we need to do in the future, even if we haven't done them before. So that's kind of what happened. Turned out okay, patient is great. In residency, a lot of times patients would ask, have you done this before? Yes, in fact, I have done it before on a mannequin. When you realize that you still have over 1,000 slides to study for the exam and it's 1 a.m., <laughs> I'm fine. This is how I study. I know people say cramming is bad, and it is for most people. Unless I studied for a short period of time, I could not do it for a lot of tests. I, like for the big ones, I obviously studied. But for the majority of my tests, when it was the weekend before, I just got in the zone, man. Uh, yeah, same. I 
am the biggest procrastinator, especially when it comes to studying. I'll wait till the last minute, cram it all in. Luckily, I don't have to study too much anymore. I just am like reading to learn. This though, this is gonna be a big concern for our future babies. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to really teach them not to procrastinate. Asks you where it hurts, then puts pressure on it. <laughs> <laughs> we want to localize your pain. We want to see what part of the anatomy is actually hurting. Distinguish if it's bone, neuro pain. Is it the same type of pain that you're complaining about or is this a new pain that I've discovered? Because there's a difference between tenderness and pain and it's a very important distinction. I feel like in sports medicine, I do this all the time. I'm like, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? Oh, right there. Beep. Sorry about you. But he's right, we gotta figure it out. I gotta know like, how bad that really hurts there, if it actually is tender, is it on the bone, is it on the soft tissue? It's important, I gotta do it, I'm sorry. Thank you student loans for helping me get through medical school. I don't think I can ever repay you. <laughs> they definitely help you get through med school because when you go through year one and year two, you're usually around $100,000 in debt at that point. So guess what, if year three starts going not so well, you have a fire lit behind you where you're like, oh man, I'm 100,000 in debt, and if I fail out now, I'm in trouble. So they do help you get through med school, and I hope you can repay them. Yeah, so every time I look at my loan balance, it just continues to go up because of the interest. I don't know, we'll see. And maybe I'll pay them off one day. I'm in the public service loan forgiveness program, so maybe in 10 years, they'll go away. Who knows, for now, I'm just trying to pay them. How much do I have? Mm, that's, a, that's a topic for another video. It's a lot. So, tell me everything you told the nurse five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Gabby Hanna just told me this the other day. She said that, do doctors actually read the charts? Because I say hard no. I worked last week on a long shift and I walked into a room where the nurse told me some brief details about the patient. I totally forgot them because I got caught up doing something else. And I again walked in and I said, hey, so tell me what seems to be the problem. And I thought about Gabby and I was like, mm, now I know why they think we sometimes don't read the chart. Okay though, but to be fair, so like our MAs will room the patients, they get the a little bit of information and they write it in there. But I wanna hear what's going on from the patient. And so a lot of times they'll say, oh, do you want me to like, tell you what I told her. And I do because, I mean, not that I don't trust my MAs, but I want to hear it from the patient so that I make sure I got everything right and I'm making decisions based on what's going on with the patient. And so, yeah, you might have told it all to the, the nurse or the MA, but I'm gonna make you tell it again. Sorry. That's it. That is it. Thanks, Dr. Mike. I hope this was fun for you. It was really fun for me. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. Otherwise, don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'm not even gonna say I'll see you next week this time because it's been a lie. If you have any ideas for what you wanna see in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you hopefully soon. I love you guys, thank you for continuing to watch, and yeah, that's it. Bye!